Uh, I uh, rise today, unfortunately, in opposition to this bill, which is a huge disappointment to me as a Nevada and as a staunch advocate for conservation and a representative for so many who are counting on Congress to take action to combat the climate crisis. And, um, you know, I just want to draw attention to this issue because uh, on energy and water, I serve on several committees, the Problem Solvers Caucus. You know, we know that we have to make a transition and it's not an either or, it's a portfolio. And uh, we know that we have a climate crisis problem. And I represent a state that is a clear example of it. I'm, Lake Mead has a bathtub ring that's the size of Statue of Liberty uh, as a result of the most drastic drought in 12 centuries. Our two largest cities, uh, Amade's uh, district, uh, Reno and Las Vegas, are the two most rapidly warming cities in the country. And in 2021, our heat-related deaths in Southern Nevada doubled from the year before to 245. That has been a five-fold increase over the last decade. And I should point out that the, these deaths are mostly our most disadvantaged people who can't afford air conditioning, who you know struggle with costs. Uh, and in fact, heat-related deaths have outpaced car fatalities in Clark County. And our neighbors in northern Nevada, everyone in this room experienced it a few weeks ago, are breathing unhealthy, smoke-filled air from wildfires. Uh, I, you know, I've made a commitment to work on this committee, the NW subcommittee, on the Natural Resources Committee, with the goal of ensuring that Nevada has reliable access to water for the long term, and also ensuring that renewable energy can be deployed swiftly and responsibly. And I want to make a point that doesn't mean no oil and gas. It doesn't mean no nuclear energy. It means that we have to take into account all of the costs associated with our energy portfolio. Uh, I, you know, one of the things I want to point out is we, when I hear uh, my colleagues who are oil and gas proponents basically talk about the cost of energy. And we have to remember that the cost of not acting will increase our energy costs as well. Uh, a strong, uh, clean energy economy will save us billions of dollars, by money by avoiding billions of dollars that natural disasters and rising costs will incur from unabated climate change. 18 natural disasters in this country last year alone caused damages exceeding $1 billion. NOAA calculated a total cost to the nation of $165 billion. And it's not just about losses. Clawing back this funding cuts into gains that we have made in our growing economy. And my district has benefited from this a great deal. In fact, my whole state has. Uh, Northern Nevada actually leads the nation in the highest number of clean energy jobs since the passage of the IRA with 10,000 such jobs to be exact and more than $4.4 billion in investments. Economic strategy aside, this bill even more shockingly cuts funding in half of our water smart program at a time when, as I said, the West is battling a 12th century drought. The highly successful program has enabled the Bureau of Reclamation to work directly with Nevadans to increase our water supply providing grant funding that is essential for projects ranging from replacing glass lawns with water smart landscaping to restoring the Las Vegas wash uh, through which the Las Vegas stormwaters runoff is treated and returned to Lake Mead because we cannot afford to lose one single drop of water. And Southern Nevada has been a national leader in this. Congress should be encouraging other states and communities to follow our lead in taking advantage of how impactful uh, this program is, not gutting it. And when my Republican colleagues state that these cuts are necessary for tightening our belts, standing up for fiscal responsibility, I find it quite hard to believe. Uh, that claim is pretty rich when considering the House majority is expending its time and energy advancing 
tax cuts at the expense of $96 billion over a decade that could instead go towards making start improvements to improve in programs with a national impact like Water Smart. I find these choices somewhat troubling and I find it hard to stomach members parroting political talking points about fiscal responsibility when the cuts are coming out of water conservation programs that my community and so many communities in the West rely on to survive. On this bill, with its priorities clearly out of whack, I sadly uh, urge my colleagues to vote a no.